Hello, movie trivia schmodown universe. We are so excited for season eight. Season eight is the biggest season that we have ever done. And we have launched the schmodown faction merch. That is right. Faction merch from all eight factions. They are available now. You like swag? Well, get a swag hoodie. Put on that hat with corruption hat. Put the shirt on. Get the championship design. Anytime you purchase faction merch, a percentage of the profits go into a pool. It is going to contribute to what the factions are playing for. Hell, I want to see them playing for $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. I want to see them playing for what they are able to play for, what they have deserved to play for. Who's the faction I'm supporting? Who do I want to win? And I get it. So head on over to the Skybound store now. The link is in the description of this video. If you're watching your favorite factions and you know when they're going to be competing, put on the shirt, put on the hoodie, put on the hat, and let us know. Take some pictures, tweet it out, hashtag Schmodown, and we will retweet it and show everybody who you are supporting. Enjoy the match, enjoy the merch, and we'll see you next time. Welcome back to the movie trivia schmodown alongside noted comedian and author Ken, the pit boss knapstock. I am merely Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. And Ken, the matchup we have today in a season filled and known for its crop of hotshot rookies, we have two fellas that have Howard Hespin their way to the head of the class. Griffin Newman, downtown Griffin Newman's taking on Jacoby Bancroft, the deal breaker, both of whom sport a 1-0 record. This is very fun for me, Mark. I'm like a fifth year senior that didn't leave the parking lot. And I don't know any of these names and faces, but I'm so happy to see uh, the managers I know bring passion and have these wonderful new players to the league, both coming in with wins, both one and oh, both being talked about. It's exciting stuff, Mr. Ellis. It feels like when you come back to the comedy store after a year in a pandemic and you don't recognize half of the employees. And so these particular employees in question now, uh, uh, Griffey, we know, comes in and he is beloved both on Earth and Eternia. And man, was he impressive, not only in his win, but also in the free for all. He put on an MVP like performance. You look at Jacoby Bancroft and he had one of the best matches of the year, narrowly defeating a very game Jacob Blunden. And so this one could be that match match where you start to see one of their trajectories heading towards a rookie of the year campaign like an Oyama or an Ethan Irwin in years past. Yeah, good point, Mark. One and oh, you want to have that win, but now you got to decide it's destiny. It's like a good sci-fi fantasy fable. What what direction are you going to go? You can go left, you can go right. You need this win to establish who you are. And yeah, you mentioned uh, uh, the deal breaker. He, he had that uh, great battle with Janine the Machine. That's a competitor I absolutely know and love. And he he uh, absolutely uh, you know showed himself there. And and you got fans talking. This is the the youngsters, the new the new faces deciding their their destinies is is, is, is what I'm excited to be here for today. I'm going to give you a new face, too, just because, you know, I've seen you fairly recently. But uh, again, it is nice to have you on the desk. And for a look at how we got here, both for all the fans at home and for Ken, let's take a look at this promo. These new rookies who've been coming in, the new prospects, we hear things. We hear things about how great they're going to be, how good they can be. Season eight, it's war, Christian. We're about to see it go down between Mark Hoyk and... A very mysterious, but not as mysterious as Hoyk, maybe, but newcomer, Griffin Newman. Uh, you said my name is Downtown Griffin Newman. Uh, that's the name my parents uh, gave me. My chosen name is Downtown Griffy Nooms. That's how I'd like to be referred to for the rest of this, uh, this season. For the exchange, they take out corruption. But why do I keep ending up in the winner's circle? That's the question I want to be asked. He's going to have a belt. I'm going to win my unprecedented fourth manager of the year. I just hate 
losing to Tom because he has the most annoying face. The Deal Breaker, Jacoby Bancroft! Jacoby, what an opening match for you. You have this nervous confidence that I absolutely loved to watch. Oh, this is an incredible feeling. Um, I was so scared that I would go 0 for 8 in round one, you know, going into this, because that's, you know, a fear for your first match ever. All right, everyone, I am back in action and ready to go. You know, I had a pretty solid first singles match, and now after that, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I get to take things a little bit easier. Is there anyone you have an eye on? that you want to play currently. Tyrant seems like he needs to be taken down a peg. King Kong seems like, a, you know, like a ton of fun. Griffin Newman seems like a blast. Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, oh, it's not going to be easier at all because I'm, I'm facing the exchanges top rookie. All right. Yeah, great. No, that's, that's, that's awesome. Jacoby Bancroft, this message is for you. I respect you. You're a good man and a good trivia player. I know what I know, I know that I know a lot, and I'm ready to prove myself, and just at the end of the day, just hope my score is a little bit higher than his. I know you're feeling hot. Got 100% accuracy on your last match, good for you. I didn't go up against a rookie. I had to go up against a vet, and I beat that geek. Now I'm gonna beat you. I guess I better get more serious. All right, that's better. Trash talk time. Okay, to be honest with you, I'm not super great at the trash talking, uh, so I kind of enlisted Christy V's help. All right, uh, Griffy Nooms is a... Uh, okay, I can't... I, I can't say that on camera. He has a... Oh. Oh, wow, that's... That's not appropriate at all, either. Okay, hold on. I can do this. I can do this. One second, one second. Griffy Newman's name came up. It says, this man can beat Dan Merle. And that's all I needed to see. Jacoby. Your career in the movie Trigger Schmodown has largely been on the up and up up until this point, but I'm about to tell you some bad news. You're going down. Down. Forget all of that. There's really only one thing that I have to say here. You know, there are a lot of rookies this year trying to make a name for themselves, and I already took down one future titan in this league by the name of Jacob London. So you know what? Groovy News, you're next. Yeah, that sounded, that sounded pretty serious, didn't it? All right, Ken, you see that both these fellows know how to talk and you get the feeling that they might have had some tutelage in that department from their managers. The Finstock Exchange looking to get to that next level and boy, could the Stars use a win today. The Stars need a win. It's been a rough go for Roxy so far, but I absolutely believe in what she does. She's a great motivator. She's a, a person that provides inspiration and guidance where Tom just probably provides, um, you know, um, I don't know what Tom does anymore. I'm surprised he's still in the league. I thought that investigation was going to uncover a little bit more, but he's here. And anyone who is with Tom, though, has an immediate kind of edge to him, a, a gritty feel, because of that, that's what Tom brings to the league and, and with the exchange. Yeah, I feel like Tom sometimes less is more, and that probably suits yeah. his players just fine. Uh, you a watch guy, Ken? Uh, I haven't had a watch since my Casio game watch broke in about 89. Okay, would that have told you what time it is? Oh, my friend, I know what time it is. It's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Oh, man, does that sound good? And here for more sultry tones is the golden throat of Christian George Harloff to introduce our competitors. Introducing first, representing the stars with a record of one win, no defeats, he is Jacoby, the deal breaker, Bancroft. And there is Jacoby in his yes. trademark laid back outfit. Now, Jacoby, you've had a number of interesting life changes recently, but just sticking with the schmodown, you got a win in your singles career. But what a lot of people are talking about, what Ken hinted at, was that match that you and Janine the Machine lost to deception, but people marveled at how y'all came back and showed a lot of backbone. What can you take from that match and apply it to your opponent today, Griffin Newman? 
Um, I think I can apply that. You just you can never give up, really. You have to always fight your hardest, even when the odds seem insurmountable. Uh, that you got to just you got to keep going and, and give it your all. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today, because uh, Griffin's pretty scary uh, on all on all accords. So I'm just going to keep my head in it and and put on a good show. Um, so that's my goal. Yeah, you also put on a great shirt. I really love your style, and I, I'm hearing you know this deal breaker thing. Uh, I'm excited to see what you can do here. How do you how do you how do you approach how do you bring this laid back approach into such a competitive atmosphere? Well, I just don't think about it too hard. I don't think about a lot of things, you know, just normally. So I just tend to try to put things out of my mind, try to relax, and choose a good Hawaiian shirt to 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 have some fun in. So that's that's my motto in life: always choose a good Hawaiian shirt. That's he a great is dressed point. like. Magnum P.I. or like your auntie's couch in the 1980s. And now to meet his opponent, back to Christian. And his opponent, representing the Finstock Exchange. With a record of one win, no defeats, he is downtown Griffin. There is Griffey Nooms in his trademark cap, and he's pointing down. He's he's continuing to point down because it's downtown. I see how it's working. Now, Griffey Nooms, you can't believe it is called another grown man that you had an impressive match and people were talking about you. But then that free for all performance, you were in the running to possibly be the most valuable player of the entire event. What does that experience do for you now that you have your second match against a tough opponent? Validation, just validation. Yeah, you know, uh, Jacoby uh, just had a big win in his life. He got married. Uh, I am violently single right now. Uh, I've been a single man living alone throughout the pandemic. Uh, and you know, it, there's a theory that uh, boxers, great boxers, should uh, refrain from sex before a match to stay focused. Uh, I've been. Uh, let's say refraining for, for many, 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 many months for this match. So, you know, it's nice to see uh, that, uh, you know, reap rewards in uh, my first match and in the free for all. And I expect that to continue uh, today that my dry spell in other areas of my life will extend to uh, a, a victory lap in this one area. Ken Griffin sounds like a guy I know. Yeah, as someone who was chased, uh, not by choice, for a very long time, I respect mm. where Griffin's coming from here. Thank I got to ask yeah, you strategy, about, strategy, yeah. strategy, it, yeah. It clears the head, if not, uh, you know, slows your life down. But I, I, I want to ask about your manager and your relationship with Dagnino. I have a history yeah. with Tom. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I love what he brings to the league and what he, what he mm. brings to players. But, like, uh, what kind of advice does he actually give you? Uh, a lot of good advice. I mean, honestly, I, I was sort of confused when you said my manager, because I don't think of myself as having a manager. I think of myself as having a second father. Uh, you know, uh, Dagnito uh, checks in on me every hour on the hour, you know, both uh, to, to quiz me uh, and and to just sort of give me really good uh, life advice, uh, touchstones. I he respect is. him as a man. I respect him as a manager. Yeah, uh, yeah he's the best. He, he's not unfamiliar with paternity tests, indeed, so I understand where you're coming from. That's good. Asked, answered. Thank you, sir. Mm, anytime. Hello, everybody in the movie trivia schmodown universe. Hello, Fresh. What is Hello, Fresh? Listen to this. Hello, Fresh. You're going to get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. You got to skip trips to the grocery store and you count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy. It's fun and it's affordable. And it's why it is America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just around 30 minutes. Try HelloFresh's quick and easy meals, 50 to 20 minute dinners, breakfast on the go, and more easy options perfect for your busy lifestyle. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order on the app within minutes easily change your delivery day food preferences plan size or skip a week whenever you need i get so excited when the hello fresh packages arrive to my house uh it's like christmas when it shows up because i really look forward to getting the chicken for the holiday or whenever i'm grilling i throw the chicken on there it is fresh it is tasty it is 
just tremendous. I love their chicken. I love their food in general, and it's a lot of fresh ingredients, and you'll love it too. So go on over to HelloFresh.com slash MTS12. Use the code MTS12 for 12 free meals and free shipping. Did you hear that? It's pretty simple. HelloFresh.com slash MTS12. Use the code MTS12, 12 free meals and free shipping. It is HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Now go watch the match. All right, so we bring in his competitor now. They see each other eye to virtual eye for the very first time. Griffin, if you want us to tell Gucci to stop texting you every hour, you just let us know. In the meantime, I guess we will progress to the rules of round number one. Round number one, eight questions are asked to the field from eight different corners of movie, trivia, schmodown, know-how. Each question is for the point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to the camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule, named for an intern long ago. If you need a repeat of the question, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer, use a jeté rule. You also each have one challenge you may employ at any time throughout the three-round match. Again, they look focused. They look ready. I'm going to ask those two fellas first. Uh, Jacoby Bancroft, the deal break. Are you ready to go? Absolutely. And downtown Griffey Nooms? Yeah, I'm ready to go downtown. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Woo. Ken, was that you? That sounded that sounded a lot like. Uh, that was actually really? my, that was my chihuahua. Really, really good. All right. Thank you, Baxter. Ken will be asking the first question at you're ready, sir. All right, question uh, number one in round one is in the category of comic book movies. Comic book movies. What 2020 comic book film stars Maisie Williams, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Charlie Heap? And Ken Bancroft getting married recently. Very exciting. Uh, Marriage on your mind as well these days, I hear. Yeah, yeah, recently engaged. uh, But we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, four. I'm not counting you down, Christian. Three. Two, one. You take your time with the nuptials. Uh, Pens down. Let's go to Griffin first. Uh, I considered challenging on this one just because I believe technically this movie doesn't exist, but the answer you're looking for is the New Mutants. That would have been a challenge that would have been upheld. You are correct, Jacoby. New Mutants. New Mutants it is. Finally came out in the theaters after 17 years of waiting. Your next question, gentlemen. Dramas. And the query for a point. This 1987 film, which tells the story of the real-life ruler, Hu Yi, won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Mm. Okay. Mark, what were you doing in 1987? I was rooting on the Bash Brothers. I was falling in love with Elizabeth Shue in Adventures in Babysitting and have not fallen out. Four, three, two, one. Chris Parker, better than Mary Poppins. Jacoby. The Last Emperor is correct for a two to one lead until Griffin shows us his hand. Last Emperor, baby. Guys know their stuff, Ken. Absolutely, all tied up at two early on in this game. Question number three, he comes in the category of famous actors and actresses, famous actors and actresses. Which actress plays real life author Susan Orlean in the 2002 film Adaptation? Mark, what were you doing in 2002? I was still rooting on the Bash Brothers, even though they had stopped playing together. Well, Ken, I made one of the more questionable decisions of my life. Uh, I decided to dye my hair blonde. Five, four, Ooh, three. Wow. Ask Christian. He knows. Two, one. Chen's no. down. Let's go to downtown first. Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep, a beloved fan favorite of the Schmodown, is correct. Hi, Meryl. We know you're watching. Jacoby, did you honor Miss Streep as well? Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. Absolutely. So we move on to your next category, movie quotes in this three to three ball game. This Disney animated film features the line, teenagers, they think they know everything. You give them an inch, they swim all over you. Well, Mark, it's just good to be back next to you. I haven't seen you in a couple of years. It's, it's good, to, good to be around you again. <laughs> Wait, are you the one that they just stuck in 2017 or is that the other one? Five, four, three. 
two. I can't keep track of you all anymore. One. Ben's down. Let's go to the deal breaker. The little mermaid. He got it. He is four points in is Griffin Newman. Yeah, I want to be part of that world, Little Mermaid. Can they know their stuff? Wow. Beat for beat, punch for punch. All time. Stop jinxing it. Fifth question coming in in the category of 80s movies. 80s movies. Movies made in the decade of greed and excess. Who plays Dr. Rumack in the 1980 comedy Airplane? Hey, Ken. Yeah. We know where I was in 1980. Rooting on George Brett. Big year for him. I was being born. Oh, you are a geriatric millennial. Five, four, three, two, one. Pence down. Let's go to Griffin Newman. I was tempted to call him Shirley, but I believe the answer is Leslie Nielsen. We probably would have accepted either one. Jacoby. Leslie Nielsen. He got it as well. It is five to five and at this point unless we risk the announcers curse further these two fellows have a perfect game three questions away from possibly a bonus question but where we are right now is the category of comedies <laughs> <laughs> i love rookies for that reason your question for a point who plays the lead role of dickie roberts in the 2000s comedy dickie roberts former child star mm. Mark, you were a child star. You appeared on 13 episodes of Night Court, correct? Did I have that right? I think you're going to be confused with Sam Levine. Oh, that's probably right. Yeah, who was the star of The Wonder Years. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we go to Jacoby. Did you have it? David Spade. He had a cool show called Lights Out. Does Griffin Newman know it? Well, I was going to make a Lights Out joke, but you stole that from me. David Spade. <laughs> I, I digress. My bad, Griffin. That no, is correct. Fine. Six to six, Ken. Six to six. Man, this is a great fight here. Uh, good to watch this here. We are going to number seven. Your category is fantasy slash, slash sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. What sci-fi franchise features the characters Ari, Cornelia, Bright Eyes, and Winter? I caught up with, uh, with our guy David Spade not too long ago at the World yep. Famous Comedy Club. And... Um, yeah. He played played me a voicemail one time a couple years ago. Yep. One of the best voicemails I've ever heard in my life. Five. From Tim Kazarinski? Three. Chris Farley. Two. Mm. One. Pens down, and we go to Griffin. Planet of the Apes. Ladies and gentlemen, he's one away from a perfect game, is Jacoby. Planet of the Apes franchise. Can't these questions too easy? No. They, they, We're just they, that they good. Money. Yeah, they don't step much. Please. All right, then we'll try to throw a screwball in with your last category in round one, horror slash thriller. Keep in mind, gentlemen, this is for a perfect round one in which you will be asked a bonus question. Here we go. Which actress appears in more installments of the Halloween franchise than any other performer with a total of five films to date? Big Halloween guy, Ken? Uh, not the holiday, not the movies. No, no, it's uh, it's Satan's holiday. I was told to stay away by my parents. Uh, our president, uh, Grace, is a big fan, I hear. That's true. Four, three, two, one. Pens down for a perfect round one. Deal breaker. Jamie Lee Curtis. For a perfect round one, Griffey Nooms. She's about to add two more films and probably $20 million. Jamie Lee Curtis. Well, doesn't yeah. sound like a bad day the ballpark to me, Ken. Perfect round ones, and now they will be asked a bonus question because it is both of them. We're going to ask it just like any other round one question. The question is to the field. Please write down your best attempt at an answer. That's your ready, sir, Knapsack. Yes, sir. I was just scrolling down here. All right, your bonus question. Who plays Albert Goldman? The star performer at a luxurious drag club in South Florida in The Birdcage. Mm. Amazing, Mark. Two perfect first rounds. And I was there at the beginning of this game. Through the first round, we'd be drunk on whiskey and Tom would be smoking in the after buzz bathroom. Yeah, I think uh, Ruble Cobb and I both passed out during our first match. Five, four, which I won, by the way. Three. Hi, Christian. Two, one. Hands down. Let's go to you, Griffin. Nathan Lane. That's a great impression, and you also get the point. Does deal breaker okay, impression? Nathan, I can't do the impression. Nathan Lane. 
it's, it, it, you're off to a hot start with it. And both these fellows off to a hot start in this match, Ken. It is perfection across the board, and that applies to the announcer so far as well. Nine to nine is the count. So simply by process of who is intro last, we go to Griffin Newman. So Griffin, you have the option. Do you want to spin the wheel first and field your four round two questions, or do you want to defer to Jacoby? Uh, I go by the old schoolyard adage, uh, first is the worst, second is the best, so I will let Jacoby go first. Okay, before we drop you gentlemen out, I'm now going to give you the rules of round number two. It's the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom and justice. They each get a spin once they settle on a realm. Four questions. Each question's worth two points. No penalty for missing a question, but stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. We think, and at that point, the value of the question recedes to one jte rules and challenges all still intact all right gentlemen so griffin very gentlemanly deferring to jacoby so we'll say goodbye to downtown for now and we will welcome in jacoby's manager roxy stryer thank you Hello. for always making my job so easy because you are doing not only a perfect job an incredible job but you're doing it in the star way with grace and poise and don't have to say things like first is the worst second is the best because as we know third is the one with the hairy chest and i don't want to find out who that is right now <laughs> how are you feeling i'm doing great that was an exciting first round um i'm i'm, I'm super pumped i'm glad you could spin first and then we'll we'll keep this momentum going so uh, you've got so, that on your side right now let's spin let's see how it goes and figure out what we're going to do with this wheel we have, we, have a, okay. we have a few seconds. How are you doing? You doing, you doing good? Oh, thank you so much for asking. Yeah, um, and, and the wedding, everything was okay? And, yeah, yeah, it was great. Beautiful. Yeah, awesome. Good, Beautiful. good to hear. Uh, you don't actually have to take the whole time if you don't want oh. to. Mm -hmm. oh, well, sorry. we were just hanging out, Mark. You know, okay. nothing wrong with that. No Let's no spin this wheel, see how it goes. All right, and Bancroft with the spin. Ken, he spun one way, the wheel goes the other way. I'm not sure how that functions. That is magic. I'm that good. He's a wizard. Magic is not precise, sir. All right, and he has landed on disaster film. So, Jacoby and Roxy, you have 60 seconds to decide if you'd like to keep that or use your mulligan, which is golf for do-over. You talk to me, Jacoby. <sighs> this one's interesting because this is one of those middle ones where it's, and we're tied. We're doing well. This is that down the middle where I'll probably do well in this. There's better ones on here. There's worse ones on here. I know, but think about it like this. If one of those ones that we are, if there's anything you're trying to avoid and we get one of those over this, how are you gonna be feeling about that? I would I would be a little sad that I would, that I spun again. So I okay. think I should work my way through disaster. Or you think we should risk it for the biscuit? Um, you are the deal breaker. You do have momentum on your side and I'm pretty confident you can navigate any slice on here. So if you wanna risk it, I am with you. If that's where you're, if that's what you're feeling. Let's do it because that's exciting and it's either going to work out really well or not. So it's not going to not it's not going to work out poorly. Okay. We can navigate. Let's try it. Let's do it. Let's spin again. They're spinning again. Try it again. Maybe the other. Yeah, this like, way. This way. Yeah, now, okay, oh, now, now it's going. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, that was a good spin. I feel it. I think it was a solid one. All right. Let's hope it's not. And truly remember, no matter what. It's looking like. Animated movies hangs on. It will be animated movies. Okay, right. so you, you've got this. Don't forget about all the rules. I know you know everything, but you've got this. Yeah, I think so. I can navigate happens. through this one. Okay. And we're rejoined by downtown as the deal breaker. Grab some hydration before fielding his four questions, Ken, in the world of animated movies. Ken will be administering Jacoby's questions. I will be asking questions to Orca, excuse me, Griffin Newman. Absolutely. Here you go, Jacoby, in the category of animated, animated. First one coming in. In what 2006 DreamWorks animated film does Bruce Willis voice a raccoon? Over the hedge. That is correct. That is correct for two points. Oh. There you go. All right, uh, question two. What government agency is after The Simpsons in The Simpsons movie? Five, four. Multiple three. choice, please. A, CIA. B, FBI. C, EPA, D, NSA. Hmm. 
the NSA. Incorrect. And so now for a chance at a steal, Griffin Newman is going to hear the question again, and then Ken's also going to give the multiple choice options. Downtown, uh, what government agency is after the Simpsons in the Simpsons movie? A, CIA, B, FBI, C, EPA, D, NSA. Uh, considering that the plot of that movie actually hinges on a toxic amount of pig poop, I feel confident saying that the answer is EPA. That is correct for a big steal. That is correct. Big steal. Two questions left for Bancroft, but Newman closes the gap to one. It does indeed. Third question coming in here. Who voices Chicken Little in the 2005 Disney film, appropriately titled Chicken Little? Zach Braff. That is correct for two points. <laughs> Zach Braff. That was a good run. You know, he was coming off uh, Garden State, Chicken Little. What a, what a time. What a time. Rob, yeah. All right. Uh, next question uh, coming in here. It's the final one, right? It is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Final question of the round for you here. What 2007 DreamWorks animated film follows an insect who decides to sue the human race for stealing resources from his kind? He's not a good fella. He's a bad fella. Uh, B movie. That is correct for two points. The comedy stylings of Jerry Seinfeld. Yes. Did he just quote B movie, Ken? That's he did. impressive. He did. Okay. So an impressive round two all the way around for Deal Breaker. He did lose a point, and that was a two point swing to Newman, but he recovers nicely. Hi. Gucci. Hello, Gucci. everybody. I, I don't know if, if you have the same experience as me. Roxy said that third is the one with the hairy chest. I've always known it as third is the one with the diarrhea chest. That is true. Right? Okay. I'm just glad we're aligned on this. Look, I have my cat here, and his name is also Griffin. After what? Griffin Newman. Yes. There's no question about that. And he's downtown guy, too. Look, I just got done, you know, playing golf. And then I went and saw this guy who's bottling this aphrodisiac for me. Cool. And it's going to be called Aura Levels. You have Aura Levels. I'll be sending a bottle over for you right away. Perfect yeah. first round, per the usual. Great steal. He's cutting. Oh. We'll spin this wheel. We'll get what we want. We'll take him home. We'll minus one him. Bottom line. <laughs> Whoops. You went bananas. Sorry about that. Quit it. He's all right. Uh, I'm going to try snapping to spin the wheel because spatial awareness seems to screw over people every time they try to spin it. Let's go. OK, ready? Let's go. Uh, Tom, all the pet lovers out there are going to need proof of life with Griffin after that. Yeah, we'll get it. I don't know what he knocked over. Okay, round and round the wheel goes, Ken, and this could be a big spin, and it's landing in the category of animated, so we're going to spin it again. Spin it again. Spin it again. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Big money, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Okay, disaster movies. So, Jacoby spun away from it. Griffin, do you want to keep disaster or use your mulligan? How you feeling, buddy? I'll take it. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. We're not scared. No. All right, we welcome back Jacoby. As we say goodbye to Gucci, we welcome in another disaster, this time in the form of questions about those style movies for Griffin Newman. Jacoby mm -hmm. Bancroft could steal should Griff miss a question. Okay, Griff. Your first okay. question, World of Disaster Films for two points unless you need multiple choice. Jake Gyllenhaal, Dennis Quaid, and Emmy Rossum star together in what 2004 disaster film? Uh, that is the disaster piece entitled The Day After Tomorrow. It's suddenly just a three-point ball game. Jacoby Bancroft still in the lead, but here comes Newman. Your second question in the category of disaster flicks. Gene Hackman plays Reverend Scott in this 1972 disaster film. Uh, I believe that is the Poseidon Adventure. Rumor has it Leslie Nielsen's in that too, and then he became a funny guy. That is correct for two more points. And now here we are, the penultimate disaster film question for Griffin Newman, and downtown could possibly take the lead on this very question. Here we go. Medical services chief Kit Latura has to save a group of people trapped in a New Jersey tunnel in this 1996 disaster flick. 
I believe that is the Sylvester Stallone film entitled Daylight. Your belief has become fact. That is correct. And with that, Ken Griffin Newman has a one point lead. He's looking to build on it going into round three. Downtown, your final disaster film question is upon us, and it is. In what film does Earth have 18 days until an asteroid hits it, eliminating life as we know it? This one's tricky because of the 1998 doubleheader, but I believe the answer is Armageddon. Five, four. I could stay awake just to hear more correct answers from Griffin Newman. That is another correct one. That's a perfect round two, and that gives him a three-point lead as we go into round number three. Ken, it is pandemonium. Wow, what a round. Griffin really showing what he knows. Uh, I, I thought we uh, had a new ankle bracelet on Tom. He's still here, but good advice for him as well. But Jacoby's right there. As I always say, it always comes down to the third round. That's the side of the two great competitors. Yeah. Sending our best to the other Griffin, the cat, because uh, God knows what just happened. So round number three is the round that will determine the match. What we need from each competitor is three numbers. These numbers may range from one to 20. Each one corresponds to a different category of movie, trivia, schmodown, mystery. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three. Your final question, should we make it that far, is worth five gigantic points that we'll see one of you eventually going to a 2-0 and singles record. So we are going to get the lucky numbers of the current leader, Newman, first. Griffin, from 1 to 20, what feels fortunate? I will take 1, 9, and 19, please. 1, 9, and 19 off the board, Jacoby. Any three numbers from 1 to 20 except for those? Uh, 16, 15, and 4. I have no idea how these people get these numbers, Ken, but we have three numbers from each one, and that means it's time once again to... Oh, God. All right. We're going to say goodbye to Jacoby for a moment. The proof is in the pudding. You know, look. Look what we do here. Yeah. I, I, I could make a cat up here. Yeah. There's another one. Yeah. Multiply. So two here. Yeah. You know, these guys love me, obviously. And I love We you. all do. America loves you, and I love you. This is the reason why you're the number one pick. This is the exact reason. You're a beast. Thank you. Put this guy away. Let's, yep. hang on, let's hang a minus one on them. Let's cool. do it. Okay. Continue what you're doing. You're the Thank best. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Daddy. I love you. You got it. Listen, I don't want to put more pressure on you than is already on you right now, but I'm afraid that if you don't win, that we're going to find out what a diarrhea chest is. So I got to win now. Like, that's, I, I, that's I don't the motivation. ever want to do that. Uh, you know you're, you're three points behind. That's one question. And it's yeah. not just one. It could be a three-pointer or a five-pointer. So there's more than ample opportunity for you to win this back right now. He hasn't missed yet, and that doesn't mean that he won't. Um, you already have that pressure off of you, which I'm actually happy about because you are doing incredible right now, and you're going to take this all the way, Jacoby. Like, this is yours to win right now. He can go sit and figure out what a diarrhea chest is while you're taking the number one in this. Uh, and you're, you're incredible. That one steal, shake it off. It really doesn't matter. Um, and you're just doing great. I'm really proud of you, Jacoby. Thank you very much. I'm having fun. This is this is a blast. So uh, excited to, to see what happens. Three points. It's nothing. It's a question. It all comes down to this. And uh, let's see how it goes. Go Don't forget go. about your JTEs. Take all the time that you need. You set yourself up for success in this final round here. So let's bring this home. It's rock and roll. It's a chest filled with diarrhea. I mean, I feel like that's intuitive. It's like a fill, treasure filled chest. Filled or like on? Like I didn't, it's not not just, like a human chest. It's like a treasure chest. And you think, oh, my God, there's going to be treasure inside. And you open it up and it's filled to the brim with diarrhea. Just oh, going to steer this best. right back up on the highway to the actual questioning of round number three. And it is going to begin with the deal breaker. Ken, you'll be asking him his questions. He selected number 16 for his two-point question. Where are we going? Uh, sir, number 16 corresponds to the category of comedy. <laughs> oh, I thought the third round serious. It they, serious. Yeah, they only do that for you, Mark. It must be a headliner thing. All right. Here we go. Uh, first question for you, Jacob. Tom, uh, comedy is the cat Yeah. For two points. Amy Heckerling made her directorial debut with this 1982 high school comedy written by Cameron Crowe and featuring performances by Phoebe Cates and Sean Penn. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. 
That is correct for two points. Two points. Cut the lead to one. And now, Jacoby Bancroft has his three-pointer. He selected number 15, Ken, and if he gets his question correct, he's going to successfully avoid a TKO. That's right. Uh, number 15 is in the category of Westerns. Westerns. All right. Jacoby, three points. In 2017's Hostels, who plays Sergeant Thomas Willis, a criminal whom Christian Bale is escorting north? one he's escorting West Studi that is incorrect incorrect uh, looking for Ben Foster Ben Foster Ben Foster in in hostiles oh he's got a type he's got a type Okay. All right. So now, can we find ourselves at a crucial juncture in both this ball game and in the young careers of these competitors? Because Jacoby Bancroft now has a five-point question. He must answer. If he gets it right, he's going to force Griffin Newman to answer at least one question correctly. If he misses, it will be a TKO scored in favor of Newman. He will win the match. Indeed, indeed, indeed. A lot of pressure on him. But, hey, a man in a Hawaiian shirt doesn't worry about pressure here. Uh, Jacoby, you chose the number four, which is, of course, we all know is Lou Gehrig's number, but also it's the category of Steven Spielberg. Famous. Okay. okay. Spielberg, friend of George Lucas. All right. Five point question. Kick it back to Griffin. Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks have collaborated a total of five times. What was their third film? that they did together. All right, then he's trying to write it out here, Ken. Mm -hmm. All his JTE rules remain. That's right. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks have collaborated a total of five times. What was the third film that they did together? Still got two JTE rules remaining. This is the moment you save those four. It's calm under pressure. Ninth inning, two strikes. Doesn't look like he's sweating. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Second one. Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks have collaborated a total of five times. What was the third film that they did together? I just forgot if he directed this one or not. He has one JTE rule remaining. Mm -hmm. Counting it down here in five. Five, four, three. Two. Repeat the question. Last All one. Right. Final one. Final one. Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks have collaborated a total of five times. What was the third film that they did together? Uh, it's between two. I just don't know if this third one. That was my last one, right? So I'm going to go with. Five. Four. I don't know if you directed this one, but I gotta go for it. Let's go the terminal. That is correct for five <laughs> big wow. points. Mark, well, that was a big <laughs> pull, a big get. What a five point question. <laughs> that is a huge, huge hit for Jacoby Bancroft. He showed that kind of backbone in his two previous matches and it comes through once again. So now he avoids a TKO, but more importantly for him right now, he forces Griffin Newman into a four point hole from which he can only climb out of if he gets some of his questions correct. So now Griffin, we come to your questioning and for your first query, you selected number one, appropriately so. And that corresponds to the wacky world of new releases. Wacky. New releases. And New releases in this economy? <laughs> I had had a few films leak out in the last year to nine months. Here it is. Two points. Which actress plays the lead role of Nora Price in the film Underwater? I believe I have no choice but to stand a legend. I think it is... 
Kristen Stewart, a.k.a. K-Stew. K-Stew, Kristen Stewart is correct for two points. It's a two-point ball game, Ken. And on this next question, Griffin Newman, downtown, has a chance to win the match. It does. It does indeed. This is, uh, this is all the marbles, as they say in the playground. That's the only playground saying I remember. Diary of Only one I want to remember, although that term probably made it out to the playground. So Griffin Newman, to possibly win the game, selected number nine for his three-point question, and Sonny Jurgensen's number corresponds to, once again, disaster movies. Ooh. Okay. And here we go. For three points and the win, who plays Dr. Jonas Miller, Bill Paxton's rival storm chaser in the film Twister? I believe the answer is Carrie Elwes. And your winner, downtown, Griffin! Ooh. Yes, sir. Diamond hands, perfect, buddy. Diamond perfect. hands, baby. Just like we said, number mm -hmm. one pick, done deal. Perfect game. Perfect game. Perfect game. Perfect plus game. a little steal. Per plus usual. a little steal. Plus a little steal. All Got right. Laser and eyes. That's Newman what we do. and Gucci celebrate. We're going to let them party in the green room for just a <clears throat> sec while Ken and I tidy up the match here. Great playing, both of you. I, I All thought, right. Yeah. I, I thought Tom's visitation hours were over, but he's still here. Yeah, unfortunately, he kind of tends to do that. And apparently he can duplicate cats. I don't know which one is voiced by Nick Bakai, but I do know this much, Ken. Griffin Newman is a powerhouse. Rookie or not, both these fellows really put it all on the line today and gave an impressive showing. Yeah, absolutely. As Nick Bakai would say, it's not a push. Uh, this was uh, uh, exactly what Griffin needed. Like we said, both of these competitors, really talented, uh, coming here with a lot of hype. But 1-0 means you can go many different directions. Griffin puts a stamp on it. Uh, no shame of what Jacoby put out there today. But, you know, it's that little edge that Tom sometimes brings, a dangerous edge. It's not an edge I want to party with, but it's a, it's a, it's a great edge here in the Shimon now. It certainly is, unless we leave these fellows any more time in the champagne area of the club. We're going to let them pop some bottles with our own Jen Sturger right now. Congratulations, gentlemen. Lots of celebrating. Look, Gucci, I mean, we give you a lot of hell when it comes to this number one pick situation. But I feel like the more we see of this rookie, the more it kind of makes sense and you look like a genius. Well, look, it's not very hard to look like a genius when you look like me. You know, and I only draft geniuses that are beautiful as well. Look at this man. Great mustache, great beard, everything going on. The guy's perfect. We knew it. We obviously, going through the dossier, this man was the number one guy. We got him Look, out of steel. Jen, we all know my Christian name is Downtown Griffey Nooms, but I have a little nickname internally. If you mention oh. poop one more time, I'm leaving. I'm not going to mention poop. I'm not going to mention poop. Give me Thank some you. credit. They call me Dennis Quaid. Do you know why? No. Because I redefine the rules of what a rookie can be. Boom. He was in that movie, The Rookie, where he's like very old. I got the reference. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm, sports. I'm redefining the, the same the thing, but it's like an unconventional rookie is the idea. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Jacoby, though, your opponent did put up quite a bit of a battle. What are your thoughts Great on him? Great competitor, great competitor. Great. I have all the respect in the world for the man. It was a fierce battle. I loved it. I got my adrenaline running. You know, he made me work for it, which I like. Uh, you know, I'm very aware that uh, no matter how good a competitor is, a lot of schmodown comes down to luck. You know, how does the wheel go in your direction? Which categories do you get? What's in your wheelhouse or not? Uh, you know, he was very lucky. He got animated. I think both Jacoby and I have exceptional strength in animation categories. And when he got that on the wheel, I was terrified for my life. I thought, here's an easy, perfect round for him. What am I gonna get? There were a few booby traps on that wheel for me. I'm not gonna say which ones, but there were a few things I pointedly didn't want, but I made it work, baby. I made it work. We make our own luck here at the Finstock yeah. Exchange. We yeah. bottle Aura and we're gonna sell it. And we're that's what we're doing. We're just dishing out minus ones. We almost got there again today. 
but that yeah. doesn't make a difference. A W. Is I, a w. We just. I also that. feel like you, you put up too many minus ones. It starts to be ostentatious. Yeah, I don't I don't let's just get a perfect game. I don't need the. Yeah, the I don't really ones. want any team to have minus points for the year. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm trying really, to take anyone high. else down. We're just trying to boost ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's all we do. We yeah, put, sure. you know, we, we drive cars that sound like spaceships. You know Absolutely. what I mean? What we do around yeah. here. Yeah. That just means you have a bad muffler. Uh, we anyways. got Gucci vision. We got Gucci vision. So uh, you're two and zero now. Two tough mm -hmm. opponents. Where do you want to go next? Uh, well, you know, uh, I, I feel like uh, there are a lot of weird uh, after effects of this pandemic, right? We've all had our, our lifestyles adjusted, and uh, one thing for me recently is I noticed I've, uh, I've I've lost a lot of weight. You know, I feel like there was a point in the bell curve in which I was eating a lot of junk food to sort of cope with all of this and now I feel like I'm eating healthier again. But uh, an unfortunate side effect there is I find that a lot of my uh, pants no longer fit and I feel like I could use a belt to huh. keep them up. That's it, woo. Wrap your head around that, Jen. I'm saying I'd like, I would like to get a championship belt is what I'm saying. Wrap your head around that, Jen. I, I, I mean, I am. Uh, so, but you you're really think you're ready after just two matches to challenge for a belt? I'm on the road. I'm I'm on the road, baby. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying I'm on the road. I'm not saying next time. I'm saying these are all the necessary steps. Listen, there's been some rumors that you may be up for consideration for the live event in New York. Any thoughts on that? I mean, that's my terrain, baby. We you know, all I'm gonna to... all I'm gonna say is, you know, I hope that that venue, whatever venue Christian chooses is roughly Gucci. below 42nd Street. It's the Gucci Theater. Because I would like to take all my opponents downtown and show Ooh. them that this Man. is where I live. Downtown's yeah. technically like below 14th, but we'll let that slide. Anyway, I mean, look, if you're about the midtown, you say 30. I feel like a lot of people put the downtown the 20s sort of count. I'm sorry, you I know, took you down this road. No, I mean, Manhattan goes all the way up to like the, the 200 Street. So in a way, it's a fallacy to frame 40th street and and the like as as midtown because actually midtown is more like what we think of uptown and uptown is like five more towns but the point is yeah i mean sure i'd like to uh, no, uh, i'd like to get We're out of whatever town matter. this is so anyways congratulations gentlemen uh oh thank you back yeah, to the anyways. test well, Ken, I don't know that either one of us is going to be asking griffin newman for directions anytime soon but that Final question of Jen. It, there does seem to be some things bubbling up, and it's gotten all the way to the highest halls of the Schmodown presidency. Someone you know fairly well. Could we see Griffin Newman in his young career already at a live event, possibly in his home city? I don't know which borough the venue would be. Yeah, I don't know. Just sit me down in Bryant Park with a cup of hot chocolate and a newspaper, and I'm good to go. Check on those Yankees. Posada's playing today, right? Yeah, look, I'm, I I, I believe uh, that uh, Griffin would already have earned that spot. He showed that he absolutely knows uh, what he's doing on here. This isn't some fluke, uh, and, and, and he's uh, he's the real deal. Uh, we, you know, Gucci of Arabia can join us as well, I guess, but uh, th that could be fun. I Look, Grace and I don't talk business. We just don't talk business around the house, so I, I can't influence anything. Okay, good. Very, very benign, safe answer. Yeah, Gucci looking like he's doing some scouting in Tunisia in 1976. But for Newman, he looks primed. He looks ready for the spotlight. We know that he craves it clearly, and I think that he might have an opportunity should he continue this momentum. He played lights out today, but so did Jacoby Bancroft. Deal breaker really showed a lot of backbone yet again, and unfortunately, when you start racking up those moral victories, it doesn't count in your official Schmodown standings the right way, but I think with a performance like what he had today he's going to win over even more fans the deal is not broke with jacoby see what i did there and here's where i think one of the strengths of, of roxy as a manager roxy knows how to come back from just obstacles and hard things she's got such a good attitude to get through so many tough things in life and i think she can take that and put it into the schmo now with her competitors getting word that uh, it might be the barclay center and uh gucci's already requested his seat on spirit airlines Let's just go to an interview with Jacoby Bancroft, the deal breaker, and his manager, Roxy Stryer of the Stars. Back to you, Jen Sturger. Well, joke is on Gucci, Mark, because uh, I don't. I think you have to actually pay extra for seats on Spirit. Anyways, <laughs> mm -hmm. <You> <laughs> tough, tough, tough loss today, Jacoby. What a match. How are you feeling aside from the L? Because let's face it, you hung in there the entire match. 
I, yeah, no, that was that was that was a lot of fun. I think going into this, it's like I really wanted to face Griffy Nooms, like downtown Griffy Nooms, because he's such a fun character and he's such a fun guy and, and he's such a beast of it. So it's like I wanted to go up against him and I knew it was going to be a tough fight. Um, so I'm glad I did. I did what I did there. Um, I'm not, you know, disappointed in my performance. I think I did pretty well. This is after it's just bad karma because like my first match, I go perfect. And then my two consecutive matches, my opponents go perfect against me. So it's so it's so it's the universe dishing it back up. Um, but overall, this was this was just a lot of fun, um, and I'm, yeah, I'm I'm very happy with you know what we did today, even though it didn't go our way. Absolutely, Roxy. You know, another tough one for the stars. You guys are so loaded with talent, and it just seems like you just keep running into bad luck. It's like, how do we move forward from here? And honestly, how do you keep the team on course? Yeah, I think that that's definitely what it is, Jen. Bad luck. I wanted to make sure that Jacoby, you have this though. To me. You're perfect. And <laughs> and that's the truth. Uh, while you might not have played a perfect match today, I do still think you're the better, stronger player. I think you're one of the strongest players in this entire league. And I think that while he might need the belt currently to keep up his diarrhea chest or whatever's going on there, uh, we're in this for the long game. And so, yes, we've been having a bit of bad luck. It's really, It's really frustrating because there's nothing we can do about that. If the wheels go how they go, the questions go how they go. I know that we have the best faction in the entire league. And for our record not to be showing that is frustrating. My players are frustrated. I'm frustrated. And the reason we're frustrated is because we are putting in more time than any other faction, more hours than any other faction. And that's going to pay off. It is because luck is just that and it runs out and we're not building something, a faction, a team, a championship on luck. We're building it on skill. We're building it on time and it's just taking us a minute and we'll get where, there. Where do you think the disconnect is? Because like, it's like you said, there is so much talent on the stars, you know, and yeah. you're an amazing manager and honestly really good at keeping these players in the game. So it's like, where, where are we missing? I think that you just can't tell what the Schmodown gods are going to do. You just never know. It's all about what, happens with the wheel it all is about what happens with the questions and you know i'm going to talk to jacoby don't answer this live but we never know what would happen if we had stayed on a different wheel slice or how sometimes the categories they just have things that you know that you or that you don't obviously jacoby has proven that animated if you want to call it a strength maybe some people do but that's not how i'm referring to it i'm just saying he has a lot of strengths he has a lot of things that he knows and what we saw today is that i think that most competitors would not have been able to do as well in his round as he was but griffin then had questions that he knew that i'm kind of guessing jacoby knew all of them as well you know it just it just depends it just depends on what you do so i think the disconnect is in timing and luck and frustration on our part and we're just going to keep on going Jen until we figure this out because there's nothing we cannot work any harder than we are there's Absolutely. nothing more we can do on our end this just is a a case of I don't know what I did in a past life but the karma <laughs> gods have come to me and we're going to fight through this because my team deserves it and I feel really bad for them right now because they are the best and they are working the hardest and that's I, I believe in that Jacoby, you know, you have such range as a player, you know, and I think you're still discovering that for yourself. Where do you want to go next? Do you want to stick to singles? Maybe, you know, teams? What What are you looking at? What do you want your Schmodown career and trajectory to look like? Uh, as you said, kind of at the beginning, just like my career is just beginning. Um, I'm in this for the long haul. I want to make my mark and prove myself in a lot of different areas. So I'll be back in singles uh, anytime that they'll have me. If I have to sneak into a match, I'm, I'm, I'll do that at some point. It's a, this New York event, I'll just, I'll just, I'll try to, I'll try to jump on stage somewhere. But uh, besides that, uh, I'm super excited for teams. I think uh, our first match uh, with Janine, I think we proved that we have a solid partnership, and it was our, it was our first match. And I'm excited to continue that and, and keep going in teams and, and, and prove that that camaraderie and that chemistry that I know Janine and I have. So uh, absolutely everywhere. Um, I'll be back uh, as long as, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have me. Uh, but besides that, yeah, I'll be back. I love that. You know, Jacoby, I've been around for a while uh, in this league and I've seen a lot of major stars 
grow and become even bigger stars through a loss than a win. And I feel like today may have been one of those days for you. So please don't get discouraged by this loss at all. You've got an amazing manager in Roxy Stryer, and I have no doubt that the stars will turn this season around. Absolutely. Yeah. Never We've discouraged. We've taken our losses, though. Uh, and so we're ready for some wins. And I'm just going to put that energy out there. For- Manifest it, Roxy. Yep. That's what they say, right? <laughs> we We deserve it. And we've earned it. And they're coming. It's just taking a minute. I love that. And I totally agree. Well, tough loss today, guys. I'll see you again soon. Always accurate with her analysis is Jen Sturger. And can I uh, back her comments 100% is that you name any big star in the movie Trivia Schmodown, they've taken a tough loss and they've grown from it like a phoenix rising from the ashes. You know how much Roxy Stryer lives and dies by each one of her competitors' matches. Tough one for both of them today. But congratulations to the Bancrofts and on that new little arrangement that they have. That's something special. That's something special indeed. And yeah, I have no doubt that Jacoby is here for the long haul. And and Roxy, you know, I I, I really admire Roxy's passion. I, I dare say it's fire and I want to give it a whirl. I, I I really look up to her and what she's doing here. And I, I this is not the end for the stars. This is just the beginning. I have a lot of faith in that. Though we will alert security at any possible uh, New York live event or any live event that Jacoby might charge this stage. Uh, good to be with you, Mark, here today. A lot of fun. I'm just Phil Rizzuto coming by for doing an inning at an old timer's game. Game, but a lot of fun to see these competitors just bring the heat. Uh, to quote a great Schmodown competitor and then announcer from a previous life, get your free egg at Slammies. Uh, we might see Jacoby Bancroft hop on a stage, pull a Parker, as we say around the Schmodown. He looks like a pretty athletic fella. But for right now, it was a very dope performance by Bancroft, but not quite enough to match the cray cray talent of Griffin Noom. That's what the kids say, right? Of downtown Griffin Nooms. And so, Ken, what a matchup it was. He pushed Griffin Nooms. He avoided a TKO, made Griffin Nooms answer some tough questions, and he hit that disaster category out of the stadium today. So for Ken Napsok, I am merely Mark Ellis. And for all of our incredible production team behind the scenes here at Skybound, our writing team headed by PJ Campbell, Christian George Harloff, we we're merely blessed to have a front row seat to this. Thank you, Jacoby, Griffin, Roxy, and Gucci, and Gucci's many cats. For all of us here at the Schmodown, we'll see you all soon.